We asked ChatGPT <laughs> 10 futuristic cutting edge technologies to revolutionize the game of dodgeball. And if you haven't heard of ChatGPT, just YouTube it or Google it and prepare to get mind blown. <laughs> so let's get <laughs> straight into it. That's a great intro. It. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> All right. So we want to look at technologies that can help improve the sport. You know, there's a lot of issues in dodgeball like cheating, finger blocking, um, you know, time to make a decision on what the call was. Yeah, bad so, ref calls. Yeah. There'd yeah. be times where like uh, they would hit the outline but the line refs or the refs wouldn't see it, but you can see it on video recording after be like, ah, that would have changed the game a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So these technologies, hopefully they, uh, as crazy as they are, hopefully they can solve these issues. So the first one is dodgeball integrity sensors, DIS. To ensure fair play and prevent cheating, dodgeball courts could be equipped with advanced motion sensors and cameras to strategically be placed around the playing area. These DIS would track the movements of all players in real time, detecting any prohibited actions like finger blocking oh. or stepping on the outline. If a player commits an infraction, an automatic warning or penalty is issued, eliminating the need for human referees. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Well, I didn't expect that last line. Just get rid of <laughs> I so, mean, if you have all the right technology, you actually wouldn't need a ref, really. Yeah. But the ref is there just for the, for the sake of the game. For the eyes. Yeah. So advanced motion sensors and cameras strategically placed around the area. Motion sensors is a very interesting one. But finger blocking would be the cameras, I assume. And motion sensors would be stepping on the line. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting because how would you even detect the finger blocking through the cameras because I guess the cameras yeah if they're placed really strategically you would need like really high quality cameras that can shoot at high frame rates to be yeah. able to capture fast moving balls right yeah. I would even add like some kind of sound detector yeah that can pick up what sounds like a finger like a, a finger block rather yeah. than like a ball block that's one of the things I want to do on the myth episode what like like how different uh, blocks sound like and what it actually is mm. you know what I mean yeah you throw it at me and like it is a finger block and I'll tell you it's a finger block and then we record that sound and we know that sound is a finger block sound whereas clean blocks and I'll tell you each time it's a clean we know that sound's a clean block each time yeah I, <laughs> I could imagine technology advancing to the point where you just give them those sounds yeah. and it, you can just register it and immediately assign it it's a finger block <laughs> crazy yeah um, but I reckon I always thought that if you wanted to have dodgeball played without any finger blocking then you need like 12 cameras one per player <laughs> yeah not, not even one i thought initially six for the six balls but no you actually need it on the plays instead hey not the balls because the balls move too fast you can't even keep up mm, i guess the ball would be the widest angle to yeah. capture everything yeah right and i guess same on this point with cameras is the in the inclusion of action replay yeah i think that replay. would really like help a lot of like referees yeah. make the right decision because so much can happen in dodgeball, right? Six balls, six players on each side. Yeah. Chaos. And you can have cameras on all angles, including the top-down angle as well. You actually rarely see dodgeball games at a top-down angle. Yeah. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, but who has the money for all these cameras? Definitely not dodgeball. No, definitely not dodgeball. I don't know who. <laughs> Someone help. Some millionaire that loves dodgeball. Invest in us. Yeah. <laughs> all right, shall right. we go to number two? Go for it. Smart dodgeballs incorporating technologies into dodgeball this themselves the smart dodgeballs would be embedded with microchips and sensors where players grip the ball and the smart dodgeball would instantly detect if any fingers are over the designated blocking line ensuring no finger blocking the ball could also detect the force and trajectory of throws helping determine if it's an allowable throw within the game rules well wow. so if it's a uh, invalid throw maybe then it'll probably pick it up but that means you'll need smart dodgeballs and sort of, some sort of player recognition where they are as well right yeah well so they're saying that the ball is a smart ball where it's it detects where the fingers are yeah and it will based on where those fingers are and where the ball hits the ball it will know if those fingers was it's in that zone of being hit yeah i think so yeah but if it's behind the line on the ball for yeah. example then it's a solid it's, it's no a finger ball. hit yeah <laughs> interesting but all of these balls be made of like if they're foam ball, how do you make a foam ball a smart dodge I ball? I think you'll have to actually change the type of ball because foam balls, you throw it at over 100Ks, they get ripped pretty quickly. Mm. So that, yeah. And foam balls already is is quite pricey and you have to buy six of them. <laughs> six. Six smart dodge balls, yeah. which is, that's a new, basically a new game called yeah. smart dodge ball. Yeah. Completely irrelevant and not even dodgeball related. I did see something on YouTube the other day where they were 3D printing basketballs where it's like, inside is all hollow and it's all sort of webbed but it still bounces like a basketball oh man 3d printing is 
so kind of scary. Yes. It makes me think about Westworld, the TV show, because like they can just print out like a body, make it functioning. You know, it's crazy. Yeah, but like what you said, like the fibers, it's like what, what's the material? I don't know, but apparently they're trying to make it bounce exactly like a basketball. But the issue they have is the gripping mm. on it. So like I think it was something like Steph Curry would do a free throw, and it's like, nah, it feels different. It feels weird. It's not like <laughs> you know, it's, it can't be a normal basketball, but they're. Using technology, they're trying to change it up a little bit and, and lower the costs of like basketball production. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh no. I mean, it's a basketball. You just buy that bloody you know, Rebel Sports for like 10 bucks. <laughs> right. Okay, number three. <clears throat> number three holographic boundary barriers. <laughs> Instead of relying on physical boundary lines, Dodgeball could implement holographic boundary barriers projected onto the court. These barriers would be visible only to the players through augmented reality glasses and <laughs> helmets. Okay, I didn't expect that. If a player steps on a or crosses these virtual boundaries, the holographic system would instantly signal a penalty, promoting fair play. All right, so it's, it's like, these boundaries are only visible through the player's eyes, uh, but it's not like, oh, so it's like, oh, imagine that. Yeah. You have like walls. Big walls. Invisible walls through their envision. Yeah, but if you if the line is here and your, your arm's over here, it doesn't mean you're out, mm. right? So maybe a percentage of your body has to be like, Across the line More than 50% be, Yeah Or maybe. like if it's a foot Or something You know Yeah I mean if it's a foot Then that's for sure But if it's over Like your hands over the line But not touching the line That still is okay right Yeah so maybe if it's more than 50% Because if there's more than 50% over the line You're probably going to shift over or something <laughs> I don't know <laughs> Well like, uh, like when I was reading this I started thinking holographic boundary bars Was just like you know, like uh, like lines that are projected And they have some kind of sensor uh. So that if you step across it It just tells the like the referee Someone. that someone's out Yeah Versus everyone having to wear it Wear like VR goggles or something Yeah, yeah uh, I think that's a bit extra <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. These barriers would be visible to only to the place through augmented reality. So everyone would have to wear glasses? Oh, you know, what? I just thought of a crazy <laughs> idea, yeah, which is it. imagine imagine like dodgeball players each have their own like goggles that they can look through. But then when you tune in on the live stream, you can tune in to the specific like POV <laughs> yeah, of the player. That's sick. That's actually that's sick. That's insane. <laughs> Like if you want to see how like oh, man, oh and imagine like you wanted to tune into a very good player yeah. you have to pay more yeah. because if you're looking through the eyes you can see where they're looking how they're playing yeah put yourself in this person's shoes oh wow that's sick that's a great idea someone tech investor please invest <laughs> <laughs> number four number four AI referee system to eliminate potential bias and ensure consistent enforcement of rules dodgeball could employ an AI referee system. This intelligent system would analyze the gameplay in real time, detecting any violations and issue warnings or penalties accordingly. <laughs> the AI referee's decision would be based solely on objective data, ensuring impartial impartiality <laughs> yep. and <Yes>. fairness. <laughs> wow, so remove the human ref mm. all up. Do you think that there's benefits to having an AI ref? Probably. Because like... Because like, have you witnessed biases as a... like? Like you refing, but also seeing other other people ref. Even if it's like a very small bias, it might be a very small bias. Maybe like I would say, let's say for example, there's a team that's winning by a, a, like a lot, and then the other team is they they don't know if they get hit or not. And I feel like the, I've seen some refs. It's like, nah, you're alive. You can stay. Like it's okay because you're losing so much anyways. Um, you probably get out the next second anyway. <laughs> so yeah, it's like know. it's not going to matter. Yeah, right? exactly. So I feel like that sometimes it has been something like that, but I don't know. I'm I'm not too sure to be honest. Yeah, and like for example, one one experience I had, I won't name any names, but I was refing and I didn't see something happen, but one one of my friends saw something happen on the other team, but yeah. they're on the opposite team, so they told me that they saw something from the opposite team of someone stepping out but I didn't see it mm. and because he was my friend I was I, technically I didn't see it happen so technically I shouldn't have called it was an out mm. but he saw it and he was on the opposite team and he was my friend and I'm like okay yeah you're out <laughs> so, <laughs> and so I kind of felt bad and, and that made me reflect like there is bias as yeah, a ref yeah. and so I guess having an AI ref system removes those biases yeah. right yeah you can't question it at all and what the AI says goes and it's not like it had it has any feelings to, for you to hurt right <laughs> <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> All right. Next one. Player performance trackers. Each player could wear specialized performance trackers on their wrists or clothing. These tr trackers would monitor their movement, actions, and interactions during the game. By analyzing the data collected, the system could identify any suspicious or unfair behavior, such as intentionally targeting specific players or repeatedly 
committing fouls. Mm. The player performance trackers would help maintain a level playing field and discourage any attempts of unfair play. <laughs> I'm confused in this one. It's very interesting. So it it'll collect the data and identify suspicious or un uh, or unfair behavior, mm. such as intentionally targeting specific players. But that's fine. But repeating. Repeatedly committing fouls, which would mean, you know, the finger blocking, the um, the whatnot. Yeah, like potentially stepping on lines, but you didn't see yeah. or... or um, yeah, I guess it's just a way to monitor where you've... Like you've stepped out of the boundaries yeah. um, metaphorically I'm, yeah, of yeah. dodgeball. I'm thinking like a Black Mirror episode now where everyone has like an honesty rating, right? Yeah. And then... It's a, it's a social credit system. Yeah, it is. It is. And then the lower it is, it's like, oh, this guy's a bit shifty. More eyes needs to be locked on him, whereas mm. the hundred percent integrity players, you don't have to worry about yeah. them at all. Yeah, that's true. So it's like it's giving each player a rating, so that referees, other players can watch them. Imagine you're walking on court, and there's an objective rating that says this person has cheated this many times. <laughs> like you would, you would have all eyes on you, so yeah. you have to be very careful. Yeah. Whereas a player who has a hundred percent honesty rating above their head, that would be like. Oh yeah, you know, I'm, I'm honest, so don't, yeah. worry, don't even worry about me. Yeah, you know? exactly. That's interesting. Yeah, you don't want to ruin your reputation like that too. Yeah. Hey, so. <laughs> That's, uh, this, this is mind-blowing <laughs> stuff. <laughs> All right, next one. <clears throat> Dodgeball VR training simulators. Oh, interesting. Before players hit the actual court, they could undergo training in virtual reality dodgeball simulators. These simulations would replicate real game scenarios and players would be tested on their understanding of the rules and fair play. The VR training could include modules and ethical decision making, fostering a culture of sportsmanship and integrity. I mean, I guess it's fine. You call yourself out, but when it comes to big tournaments and there's money involved, then it's a whole different ball field, isn't it? It's it's yeah, it's it's for sure. Like VR is interesting, but you wouldn't really like. I, I think I feel like you'd rather do it on the court in a social game versus yeah. like in VR. And for some reason, I think at the moment, in terms of VR. If you're putting something on your head in front of your eyes and you're throwing at like 100% or you're dodging, <laughs> it's going to fall off <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Either that or you're really top heavy. You know? <laughs> yeah, a little blood just rushes to your head. There's no way. Playing dodgeball in VR. No way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's like, have you seen those videos of like the VR games where like they're meant to throw balls, but then they pick up tables and they... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's funny. But yeah, I, I don't see... Unless the VR is like, you know, contact lenses or yeah. something, you know. But I think that's way in the future, if it's even possible. The future of 0.9. <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> right. Point seven, biometric headbands. Players could wear biometric headbands that monitor stress levels and heart rate during the game. Sudden spikes in stress or heart rate might indicate anxiety or cheating attempts. If a player's biometric shows suspicious readings, they could be assessed for potential rule violations. <laughs> This is so Black Mirror vibes. <laughs> yeah, it is. And I was just saying it before. It's like you put on a uh, a lie detector on someone. <laughs> Did you finger block? No, I didn't. <laughs> Get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Oh, wow. But, but yeah, that's similar to point six. Oh, sorry, point five then, which is yeah, you're, you're tracking them biometrically. Mm. Um, and that's cool. Yeah, it's like kind of like a if there's a spike unusual activity, yeah. it will register as something. Or question. I do like it actually. Monitor your stress mm. levels. And head headbands seems way more practical than VR headsets. Yes. You know? Yes. Number eight. Holographic replay system. A holographic replay system that would enable players and referees to review critical moments of the game from different angles in real time. This system would help identify any unfair play, missed calls, or controversies, allowing for accurate decision and promoting transparency in officiating. Which makes sense doesn't need to be holographic <laughs> <laughs> we just need a uh, an action replay system <laughs> oh man they're, they're really trying to make it futuristic uh, but i mean that'd be cool it means holographic comes up right here you can see it right in front of you you don't have to look into a, uh, a camera yeah you know and then you can maybe you can like it's like iron man type thing where you like zoom in like you can change the angle yeah uh, i've been playing cyberpunk a lot recently yeah. and it's it's just like that there's yeah. something called um it's called bd it's like you wear on goggles and then you can relive that person's like vision but also oh. hearing their like biometrics everything Sheesh. um so yeah, if you could totally do that you could totally like you know pick up on cheating or something yeah very cool 
All right, number nine. Number nine. Smart contact lenses. Smart contact lenses equipped with augmented reality capabilities could display important game information to players, including their current score, the number of players on each team, and the time remaining. These lenses could also notify players if they are nearing a foul or violation to help them make better decisions on the fly. Wow, I don't know. Nearing a foul or violation, like, oh, you're close to the line. Yeah. And then, beep, 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 beep. <laughs> That's, I think that's, that's cheating just, though. <laughs> yeah, that's like VR when you're walking close to a wall to tell you. <laughs> uh, but I like the idea of having like a HUD. Yeah. Because you know, that does really affect gameplay because often would be like, oh, what's the score ref? Or how much time is left? Because like, sometimes the ref doesn't call that out and you kind of have to figure it out yeah. and then that really affects your strategy. So if you know it you know, every, every second of the game, yeah. you could all as a team make decisions better i mean how far are we away from smart contact lenses i, I think we're pretty far away so, i don't know i don't know that is pretty crazy i didn't even think about the time part but that would be pretty cool just let's just think about it for a moment you have the hut in what information can you see how many players are alive how many balls on your side maybe <laughs> recommended strategies yeah i was just gonna say <laughs> <laughs> who to take out oh man at that point it's just as long as your body is still natural. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's pretty cool. I really like that idea, but maybe right now it's not it's not realistic. Uh, yeah. But I feel like, yeah, it would be like in real life today, it would be like a big score sign that constantly updates, mm. you know, that's like in front of your face. Yeah. But yeah, to seamlessly get it into your eyes is, unless you wear like Google glasses or something yeah. or apples or, you know, Ray-Bans, whatever. It'd be nice to have the scoring on the timing like basketball games. How you have two on each side or maybe one in the very center oh okay up, up at it because even in, that'd be ideal yeah even in basketball they have a shot clock too so mm. so what does that tell people who's uh, like well if you've got possession then you got to go but you have uh, i don't know maybe 15 seconds or something 20 seconds I'm, i don't remember 10 seconds I don't know. Mm. but you have to get to one side to the other and you can't just fluff around you have to make a throw and if you don't make a throw it's handover mm. yeah <laughs> all right last one voice command fairness assistant each team could have access to a voice-activated fairness assistant, AI, that would provide instant rule clarifications and reminders during the game. Players could quickly ask questions like, is this throw allowed or can I re-enter the game now? The fairness assistant will ensure that players are well informed about the rules and reduce the likelihood of accidental rule violations. I feel like this is for noobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this would be. You're in the outbox and a catch happens like... Like, what, what do I do? <laughs> yeah, man, I feel like you just, just un like, watch Dodgeball Dudes videos. Yeah, watch our rules video if you don't know the rules. Yeah, don't invest money in a voice command fairness assistant. Like, what a waste of money. Yeah. <laughs> invest that into the smart contact lenses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah. Out of all of them, which one's the best one? Oh, I really like the... Uh, like, part of me feels like the player performance trackers and the biometric headbands is cool. Yeah. But it's kind of like a violation of, like... I don't know. It feels kind of like they're invading into your body to oh, figure out. I guess so. But if you come on the court and you, you're meant to be respectful and fair, but you cheat, <laughs> that's sort of going against the rules as well, isn't it? Yeah. So sometimes extreme measures has to be made just, <laughs> just to make a fair game of dodgeball. I don't know. Yeah, it's a cool idea. But I don't know if it would work. And it could definitely lead to bullying, you know? Mm. Like, you see someone over there and they're like, oh, this guy's a bloody cheater. <laughs> Everyone just gangbangs him. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we'll let him, never let him cheat again. Yeah. Well, what about you? Which one do you think? I like... I like the smart contact lenses, to be honest. I always wear contact lenses when I play dodgeball. So, if I just swap them to smart contacts... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's... Yeah, that's I really like that idea, too. The next one, which I think makes sense is like slow like action replay that one yeah. every sport has like why can't dodgeball have it eventually yeah right I would and that so. would really help the refs to make better decisions yeah 100 uh, percent. as much as you can have two refs in the center and then two more lines refs as well there's like all these lines all these balls all these posts to look at and people can throw faster than you can see sometimes so it's just like you see it, the ball here and then the next moment, you see it over here. And it's like, what just happened? Yeah, you need some sort of slow-mo action replay um, to catch what the eye, the human eye can't catch. Yeah. Mm, to help refs just make decisions much quicker yeah. than having to like have a 10-minute meeting. Yeah, exactly. 10-minute meeting, have a huddle, and everyone's cooled down then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Bad. Yeah. Action replay you may probably take like 30 seconds max, I reckon, right? If you can get the technology and everything up to speed. That's mm. not far away, I reckon. It's just the money. It's already, yeah, it's just yeah, the money. Yeah, because yeah, it's 
done in other sports. Yeah. So. Well, that's it. That's 10 pretty cool technologies that uh, could potentially help dodgeball in the future. What do you think? Do you think there's other technologies that could like that, that you're thinking about yeah, that could help dodgeball? Know. Let us know in the comments. It's actually such an interesting topic to explore. Yeah. So yeah, let us know and we'd love to read it. We'll catch you in the next one. Catch you in the next one. I'm Peter. And I'm Phil. And we'll see you in the next one. <laughs> <laughs>